Today in the Chipo Spotlight, the GVDA GD166B for your Chipo Clamp pleasure. Big shout out to GVDA. Thanks so much for sending it in for this review. As my grandfather used to say, clamp a day cleeps the multimeters away. No, I actually didn't say that. Just ridiculous. GVDA. In the uh, cheapo spotlight a clamp from GVDA now this is one of those smart clamps oh smart has a pretty good looking color screen which we'll look at really shortly but all in all this is gonna be kind of fun to review uh, first of all you get a really nice carry case with your new GVDA uh, nice little netting here on the back to carry those accessories and speaking of accessories you don't get much you get your test leads and you get a thermal couple because yeah, it does temperature. Also get this little smart clamp multimeter manual, all in English, nice and verbose. Actually, this is pretty in depth for a uh, uh, meter manual and uh, all the info you need, as well as the specs, good stuff. Ships with that nice protective covering for the display, which is always appreciated. Let's just get rid of that right now. And uh, wow, first impressions are very well made. This is a solid clamp. Feels good in the hand. It has that weird kind of kind of wonky uh, thing here on the side, and uh, believe it or not, that is for uh, one of the tests. Yeah. So basically, as you're troubleshooting, uh, it's an extra hand um, like that. So you know, it's a handy feature. But but, and there's always a caveat, isn't there? Uh, this opening tends to let's just get that out there. Be a little painful sometimes okay but uh, it tends to block some of the access for the clamp head so depending on what you're um, going to be measuring that extra opening here uh, might get in the way cat 2 600 volt 10 amp test leads uh, they have a really nice soft uh, cushy feeling here perhaps a little bit on the small side um, not too sharp not too pointy standard PVC cable here and of course that shrouding gets in the back of that uh, meter like so it's in there pretty good I mean not not the best but at least it is fairly snug now one thing I don't like again is the yeah look at that no color coded test inputs here um, yeah we have the coding here for the common the, the positive but it really should be a black and a red jack uh. Size wise, yeah, it's your standard uh, clamp size. Not too big, not too small, but whoa, compared to that Sanwa, this thing is definitely small. Yeah, that Sanwa is just ginormous. It's a beast. But fear not, no, this little GVDA will definitely uh, be portable. Uh, no problems there. Let's turn it on, shall we? Hold down on that button for about a second, and whoa, look at that beautiful display now that is not uh, uh not oled it's your standard ebtn but uh, a nice bit of color pop for those eyes and they're trying to put a lot on here as well um it boots into auto mode and i don't know if you noticed that or not but let's just take another quickie look see turn it off turn it back on and it's now in calibration mode so when you put up the clamp for the first time goes into cal mode for about three seconds uh, just making sure that everything internally is a okay once it configures and says we're all good bada boom bada bing you hear three beeps and you are good to go speaking of good to go look at that uh, analog style uh, bar graph at the top right away it's in auto mode so volts and current as well as resistance and continuity all automatically detected or so we hope now if you want to go out of auto mode hit that function auto switch it'll cycle through the auto selections until we get into the yellow which is manual so here we are in diode mode millivolts frequency duty cycle capacitance temperature with a dual display in both fahrenheit and celsius and finally ncv and live wire cool and in terms of the diameter for the opening of those jaws we are looking at about a maximum of 34 to 35 millimeters in case you're wondering, the maximum opening on those Kiwis is actually 30, so a little bit larger jaws on the GGVDA. Input impedance on the GD166B is a healthy 10 mega ohm. Right now we're in auto mode, 
and let's see if it's going to pick up our AC voltage without any issues. And there it is, 121.0 volts. Seems a little bit high, 59.9 hertz, which is pretty well spot on. But uh, yeah, for this is supposed to be true RMS, but that does just seem a tad high. We're usually running around 120 volts. By the way, we have that one touch hold here on the side. If you want to hold that reading, click that button and we are holding that reading. I'm just curious to try this on another clamp. And of course that Kiwis has that nice illuminated, uh, I love that, uh, high voltage alert uh, display. So 121.2 coming up for the Kiwis. Finally, we'll try the Sanwa Multimeter and 121.4. There you go. So, hey, looks like the GVDA is doing just fine. Let's try the DC voltage accuracy starting out with five volts. We're in auto mode. And 4.994, so about six counts out. 4.995, about five counts out. So, uh, well, hey, it's in spec. Uh, let's try the 10 volt and that's a little bit better coming in at 9.98 volts now one thing that the clamp suffers from that a lot of the smart clamps suffer from is the fact that you can hear that relay it has a noisy relay oh man i call them the mother-in-law ah! relays you know but end of the day uh what can you do now i don't know if you can hear it let's let's try So it's that clicking sound. Um, sometimes it gets on my nerves, other times I don't even notice it, so eh. Alrighty, down mode is next. Uh, starting off with the red LED, and we have a forward voltage drop, and then it red LED, blah, I can't even talk to me. The red LED is illuminated. <laughs> Here's the green, same thing, 2.2 forward voltage drop. The yellow is not illuminated, and no forward voltage drop. The white, or the red, or the unicorn, I call it. Yeah, that one's fine. And now the white, it is illuminated with a forward voltage drop, and the blue, yes, same thing. So only that mischievous yellow uh, is yet to be illuminated. For standard diodes, yeah, no problem here. Unfortunately, you do not have that nice beeping indicator uh, when you're in diode mode as well. So no beep in the diode mode. Output voltage in diode mode is a balmy 3.25 volts. One thing that irks me with the uh, GVDA is the fact that I continuity mode, it's only going to be in smart mode. I cannot change that to a manual. So smart only. And usually that means because of the relay, we have a definite delay, but uh, it is what it is. Here we go. Standard default test probes. Okay. Here we are in standard continuity auto mode three, two, one. So definitely a delay. We do have that nice illuminated LED here at the top of the clamp. It's latched, it's loud, but there is a long delay. Ugh. Let's try the Pro Masters, although I don't think it's gonna make any difference. Three, two, one. Wow, long delay again. Perhaps a touch louder, but really no difference. Seventy-five point two decibels maximum output in continuity. That's loud. I already look at a DC current right now, and uh, that anning showing us we're pulling around two hundred and forty milliamps uh, thereabouts. Um, let's see what we have here with the Kiwis. It's a little hard to see. But wow, the Kiwi seems a little high. We're pulling around 310 milliamps, according to the Kiwi. And let's see what we get with the GVDA. Wow, about 210. fluctuating back and forth but i'd say around 200 milliamps or so with the kiwis oh okay well actually it stopped on 230 so almost in agreement with that uh anning well that kiwis is awfully high i'm just gonna try that one more time that just doesn't make any sense and i did zero all of these clamps beforehand And 
And yeah, wow. Finally bringing in the Sanwa just for a final opinion. And Sanwa is showing us around 236 milliamps. So, uh, yeah, 230, 236, 234. All of these meters seem to be well within uh, range. Uh, the Kaiwitz, however, seems to be way too high. Right now to a current reference and whoa look at that 150 milliamps coming up uh where this is a hundred milliamp uh precision reference so that is awfully high down 140 oh 140 oh we're down a little bit now it's it's back and forth though it's flaky so at those low milliamp ranges that smart mode just doesn't seem to cut it now unfortunately once again you cannot move into a manual mode for current you're restricted strictly to the auto ah uh. And just to get that second opinion, look at that 99.9 .9 milliamps for that Sanwa. So, hmm. You know, it just dawned on me that when I went to reach for my GVDA, I accidentally picked up the Kaiwiths. Man, do they ever look one and the same, don't they? Now, is that purely coincidental? Or, inquiry minds would like to know. Okay, we are in teardown mode. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, first off, let's take a look at that nice, clean PCB. Yummy, yummy. Oh, that is thing is clean. No flux, no residue, what have you. Just a nice, clean, good-looking board. Alrighty, let's start off with those input jacks. Those are over here. They are the split variety. Um, what I don't like is that we only have a couple of millimeters clearance between that input jack, the negative input jack, and that uh, case housing screw. So, whoa, a little too tight. It's over here. One lonely PTC, that's it. That's all for the input protection itself. A couple here's of our display here. driver giving us that really good looking color LCD display. Uh, moving up the board a bit, main IC is over here, the DMC 6000 yeah. tin can oscillator. Beside that over here, we have the EEP ROM, the brains of the unit, the uh, HE24C02 two-wire serial EEP ROM. All the uh, storage info for the main IC is stored in that little sucker. Over here as well as that noisy relay. That's from HFD31 uh, from Hongfa Relay. And uh, yeah, you see a lot of these in the cheapo realm. Something I'm not a big fan of is the fact that they've used a plastic insert for that uh, push button uh, for the jaws. And I don't like that. You know, over time, that's going to wear out and it, fairly quickly if you use this meter a lot. So why they couldn't have just embedded this with a uh, metal rivet or something, anything other than plastic, uh, just makes no sense. And finally, at the top, we have our piezo speaker reverse side of the unit nothing really special to look at plastic uh, no uh, shielding what have you just your basic um you know cheapy plastic backing and of course those silver pads are what make contact with the pcb to give us the power from the batteries already gonna put it back together come back with my closing thoughts I really expected a bit more out of this smart multimeter. In fact, one of the main problems is the fact that it's just too darn smart. Well, not smart, really. It just relies on being smart, looking smart, when it's really not that smart at all. The fact that we have no manual override for current mode, for me, is just lackluster. No, thank you. I do not want to rely on smart when I'm going down. Accuracy-wise as well, definitely not up there. Uh, no, it was in range, but barely in some instances. Definitely not one of the most accurate meters I've come along in quite a while. Really, it's a shame. Uh, this had a lot of potential, but end of day, this smart ACDC clamp meter, well, just isn't all it's hyped up to cool be. Cool features that inrush current, which work just fine, by the way, and the Maxman, which is always a bonus. GVDA GD166B gets a dismal two out of five stars. Sorry, GVDA, I call them like I see them. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing.